In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. He is in our it is, it is often the case that, at least within secular society, or at least within our subconsciousness, that we think that, that God needs us. Part of us actually wants him to need us. That doesn't mean that he doesn't love us, but we often think that he, do, that he needs us. And that when we think of um, things like praying, worship, um, coming to church, partaking, uh, confessing our sins, partaking of the sacraments, we can think that in some ways that it's our, our duty, that it's a chore, and that by fulfilling it, somehow we're doing something for God. But actually, God doesn't need us at all. I actually thought this would be a great church sign. Um, as far as church growth strategy, let everybody know God doesn't need you at church. He doesn't need you. Do you think that's a good growth strategy? <laughs> oh no, we want you. <laughs> but that's how sometimes we feel. The other way we approach things is what can I get out of this? But that's for another sermon a different time. In today's gospel, we have presented uh, this master who has a banquet, who invites many, and they are busy. They have uh, lame excuses to do other things. In the way the parable is presented, we could get the mind that the master needs those he, he invited to come. He's angry when they turn down his invitation and ultimately by the end swears that they will not taste of the meal. But in the, even in the story, the banquet is to their benefit. And you see, that's the story about us too, is that everything that we do, whether it's prayer, the confession of our sins, whether it's coming to church, receiving the Eucharist, they're not to God's benefit. They're particularly to our benefit. Those are the things that mold our souls to reality. Those are the things that transform us and take us from slaves to sin and death to being victorious in Christ, to living transformative lives where we go from darkness to light, where we can actually accept healing in ourselves and somehow become uh, grace-filled. God doesn't need that from us. He gives us total freedom. At the same time, out of his benevolence, he, he, he provides all of this for us. He provides everything in the world and everything in the church as an opportunity for us to partake of grace, for us to grow closer, for us to possibly feel more connected and ultimately, as I said, for us to overcome death, to be transformed. The excuses presented in today's parable are just examples. In the semantics of the language, it may indicate that there are other people that the servants went to that had many more worse excuses. These were just the highlights of the excuses. What it comes down to is that all excuses are rooted in our own worldliness, in our sense that there is something more important, something that we should be more attentive to, something that is good for our pleasure, something that is satisfying for our body, or just something that entertains us that ultimately we oftentimes choose to take those opportunities rather than the opportunity to pursue Christ 
Now again, remember, God doesn't need us. You might be filling in the gaps here and thinking because sometimes this could be used to guilt you into coming to church or guilt you into various things. But again, the coming to church and, and doing the various things of our faith is not ultimately about simply fulfilling a rule. It's about the love of Christ which is in our hearts and whether we pursue him out of love. It's not, we're not meant to reduce the gospel down to commandments and duty. We're actually meant to be motivated from the inside because we've tasted of Christ, because he's wounded our hearts, we want more. And we want more in any way we can get it. And we want to take any opportunity that he sends our way because once one tastes, partakes of Christ, a joy, a love, and a grace shed forth in our hearts. So again, reframing things not simply duty, not simply obligation, not simply the need of God that we're somehow fulfilling, but our needs, our reality, our transformation. And this is ultimately what the banquet refers to. The banquet is an invite to dine with Christ, to sit down and partake of his grace and his mercies offered to us in the various ways it's offered. After those excuses are offered, the servants are sent out into the highways and the byways. This happens twice where they are sent and they bring other people in. And then they are sent again and they bring other people in till the house is full. What's interesting about those people out there that, that are brought in eventually is that they're needy. It's the lame, the halt, the blind. They have needs. Well, and this is one of our challenges. I, uh, actually, when I was mentioning about enter entertainment, about pleasure, about those sort of things we distract ourselves, there's nothing more focus focusing in our lives than being needy. When one is broken in a particular way, whether that be physical ailments like the blind, the halt, and the maim, whether that be crushing poverty, whether that be emotional distress, which seems to be more common in our days, broken families, it doesn't matter, whatever it is, it is the needy that end up partaking of this banquet. Now, we could do another reframing. As Christians, we're called to be needy. Our fundamental confession is that apart from Christ, we can do nothing, that we need a savior, that we need salvation, that we're just fallen human beings doing broken things without Christ's help. So if we can find the humility, if we can break away from the passions of this world, the entertainment, the lusts of the flesh, the food, and all the various things that we ingratiate ourselves with, then we too can experience our own lack, our own brokenness, our own neediness. And we too might be the ones that will actually respond appropriately to the invitation. You see, those who are full of themselves have no need of Christ. When it's about me, I have no need of Christ. I have no need of a banquet. But when little old me is broken and feeling bad about myself, or when I have problems, a great desire for something more wells up within me. And actually, this is utilized within our faith. This is the appropriate, appropriate yearning for Christ, the appropriate yearning for another world, for something that is beyond the mere wrapping paper this world has to present in the emptiness. The house becomes full. The, servant fills, the servants fill the house. In the end, he says, no one who is invited will partake of this banquet. 
Why is that? Well, for one reason, it's because they never responded to the invitations. We have to be aware that God is always reaching out for us, and He has given us very standard ways of reaching back to Him and receiving Him. If we're not partaking of those things, our souls can become dead to His invitation. Do you know when uh, some priests talk about this in terms of their churches, they go to a new church, a new community, and they say, well, there's all these people out here that say they're affiliated with my church, but I never see them at church. And the question is always this, do I expend the energy to chase these people who don't want to be here? Or do I spend the energy with the people who are here? And the question is, after a few years of spending energy trying to get those people here, should I continue to pursue them? Well, you know, eventually the priest will give up and say, you know, that person, the only thing they've ever said to me is they don't want to be here. Well, God receives the same messages from us, us in our lives. He receives the same message to say, go away. Leave me alone. I have better things to do. I need to be entertained. I need to relax. I need this extra drink. He hears these same messages from us. He's gentle. He's kind. He loves us. And he's willing to be even obedient to us in his humility. And he goes away. He goes away. That's why those people will not partake of of the blessing later of that banquet because they won't receive the invitation. They've already turned it away many times and in the end, the invitations, they either became insensitive to them or they stopped coming. May the Lord bless us to see within every day, within every sacrament of the church, within every service, within every personal interaction with the people of this community, an opportunity to connect with God and to somehow become closer to partake of that banquet. We are invited to feast with Christ, not as a duty, not as some abstract obligation, not because God needs us, but because we need the transformation, we need the healing, and ultimately, we want to find ourselves sitting at that table in light, in life, partaking of joy rather than simply living in distraction in this fallen world. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. Amen.